Now, if I'm blocking in big shapes, you can use the clay buildup brush. We'll touch on that a little bit. Um, so if I go to B, C to narrow it down to my clay brushes that start with C, you can see there's clay buildup in here as well as clay tubes. And these are both very similar. Um, I actually prefer clay tubes just because it's a little less jarring. Um, but let's talk about clay buildup. So clay buildup is like the clay brush, only it actually has an alpha in there, which we'll get to in a while. And it kind of behaves a little bit more like a really, you know, again, holding down alt and stuff. So it's not it's not quite as soft as the clay buildup. It actually builds up in a little bit more of a harsh way, but it's a kind of a cool way to build up hard edge stuff. So you now, as we're building this stuff up, we're kind of destroying this geometry. I'm going to control swipe because this is a DynaMesh. And then we're back to a nice sculptable mesh here. So use your clay build to make really big changes if you'd like, or straps, or pulleys, or any any anything really. You, I use clay build up all the time for the hard edge stuff. To build up your meshes here, and then control swipe to drag, you can smooth it down if you want, and then you can go back in here with your standard brush, and you can kind of dig in along this area, or hit L, and hold down shift, and open up stroke and brush. So now that I've got two in here, is this going to do it? Hmm. It's not wanting to let me do both at the same time. Well, let's open up stroke. So I'm toggling lazy mouse on, and I'm just going to crank this lazy radius up to like 26. And now I can do nice, long, uh, patterny things along here. Like so. And again, I'm digging in, and then I'm kind of pulling out. And then if I want to, I can go in with just the regular clay brush and kind of build up softly a little bit along these edges here. So again, I've used the clay buildup to kind of build a nice ridge, and then I've used a standard brush to kind of delineate between these two areas, and then I've used the clay brush to kind of build up a nice soft transition around those. So very quickly you can get some really cool, neat, organic-y things. And really, realistically, between clay, standard, and move, I can do I do that's I do most of my sculpting with there. Uh, clay buildup, clay tubes a little bit I'll use, like hit B. C, and then just grab clay tubes, T, and you're going to see that this is very similar to clay buildup. It's a little bit softer, but you can still kind of use it and smooth and standard brush to kind of build up your meshes like so. And one thing I forgot to mention in the navigation part is when you're like really close to your object, um, again, you can go over here and navigate in your safe zone, or you can hold down um, Alt and then right click and then let go and kind of navigate with right click, as well as you can hit F. And that'll frame your object. And it actually frames the subtool, which we'll get into later. But that's also over here on this frame key. So you can actually, you know, go over here in your sculpting object, just hit F or hit that frame. And that'll go ahead and frame up uh, what you're working on. And now that we're kind of comfortable with DynaMesh, I'm going to talk a little bit more about some specifics, and then we'll just kind of uh, keep going with the brushes. So I'm going to go back and take this history slider. I'm just going to go back to, you know, this nice simple object here. Control drag to re-DynaMesh here. And I'm going to hit L to go out of lazy mouse mode. So let's talk a little bit more about DynaMesh. Our DynaMesh menu is under the tool menu, down here under the geometry submenu, underneath the DynaMesh submenu. And DynaMesh is on for this object. Now, if you're sculpting on this object, and it's like, you know what, I'm kind of liking this object. I don't want, I want to make sure, uh, I don't want to DynaMesh this anymore. You can go ahead and turn DynaMesh off. Just uh, make so that button isn't orange anymore. And now when you control drag, it doesn't do anything. It just thinks you want a mask, which you haven't gotten to yet. If you want to turn DynaMesh back on, you can turn it back on, it'll read DynaMesh, and you're good to go. Uh, project and Blur we've already talked about. Polish and Groups we're not going to talk about for a little while, but let's talk about Resolution. This is the last thing I'm going to talk about with the basics of DynaMesh. So with Resolution, uh, that's going to determine how many polygons it wants to wrap your object with. And really what it's doing is kind of taking, think of it as a big transparent cube around your object. Let's actually go ahead and do that. Let's go ahead and do, and eh, let's not do that. <laughs> we haven't talked about subtools yet. So it's basically a big transparent box around your object, and it's projecting those polygons onto your object and recreating the topology with those polygons. So when you hit DynaMesh, you're going to see, there, you can kind of see it on here. There's that little transition area of triangles. You've got up here at the top, you've got nice flat triangles on the side. You'll have nice flat triangles, but in between these transition areas, you'll kind of have triangles, or not triangles, you'll have nice quad polygons, nice quad polygons, and then you'll have transition areas. That's because it's just projecting a certain resolution box onto your object to give you just kind of dynamic, updatable geometry. 
Uh, if you want to do lower resolution Dynamesh, just drop this down. Let's go ahead and choose 32, and then Control Swipe, and that'll give us some really nice. I mean, it's all still even; they're all still the same size, but it's just a lot lower. So if you want to go in here and kind of make, you know, big, big changes on here with your Dynamesh and kind of just feel out the forms, you can certainly do that. And then when you're ready to go up in resolution, instead of hitting Control D, if you still want the option to use Dynamesh in case you want to pull something out or get really crazy with your geometry, just raise the resolution. So if we'll go from 32 to 64 and then control swipe and you're going to see uh, it might still look a little bit low res, like you can still see the faceting in there, but it is actually giving us a little bit more resolution to play with. So if you hold down shift to smooth, you're going to see it actually did up the resolution. And you can always check up here as well. So when we do a resolution of 32 and swipe it's 6,700 points. If I go up to 64 and swipe, it's not going to change. I'm glad it did that. So sometimes when you're in Dynamesh mode, ZBrush needs you to just touch the object again, just to kind of remind it that, that it needs to re-Dynamesh this object. So if you're over here going, hey, I changed the resolution. It's not doing anything. Just hold down Shift and like maybe smooth out a little area of your object or just kind of touch it and then Dynamesh and it'll update. So just keep that in mind. And you're going to see the active points change from 60, whatever it was, 6,000 to 2,600 uh, just by changing the resolution. So you got a little bit more resolution. You can go in here and keep making changes. Like so. And then once you're happy, uh, you can go ahead and let's do uh, 128. So now we're kind of back where we started. This is the default. So we can touch and drag. And that'll give us even more resolution here. And you can keep upping and upping your resolution. Now, wh by the time you get to the point where you're not making any really crazy changes, you're just doing stuff like this. You're just going in and like sharpening some areas and kind of building these out. But you're not you're not doing stuff like this or anything, right? At that point, I would tend to go ahead and just turn Dynamesh off and then use your subdivision history, control D, and actually what I would do is Z remesh this object, project all our details back to it, and then start sculpting. So whenever you're not making major changes, I would transition from using Dynamesh geometry to using a nice quadded Z remesh geometry or something like that. But we're not there yet. So while we're in Dynamesh, just go ahead and keep that on and just use resolution to your advantage. Now resolution, surprisingly, is also a little bit resolution dependent. So what that means is, let's go ahead and um, we'll talk a little bit about Dynamesh resolution as well as getting into a little bit of subtool talk.